Welcome to the How Bulldogs Coaches Show with Bill Jaling. The Coaches Show is brought to you by FBC How. Now let's join Monty Walker with Bulldogs head coach Bill Jaling. All right, Coach, Commerce a week ago. Um, they didn't come in with a win, but you can obviously tell these uh, te- these towns and teams that are so much bigger than how they have the athletes, and, and you know, well, it's just tough when you play against teams like that. And the read option seems to be the, I guess, the new the new wishbone or whatever, and and uh, they run that well, and they had a great quarterback. Yeah, uh, Commerce did a good job Friday night. Uh, their their quarterback is very was very athletic, uh, probably one of the best quarterbacks that ran that read option uh, that we faced all year long. Um, it, it hurts us. I mean, they're they're a lot bigger than us. I mean, uh, I always, when I watched the film last week, I mentioned I said that I thought Commerce was probably one of the best 0-7 teams out there. And then when they showed up on Friday night, they were just so much bigger and more athletic than us. And I swear that that quarterback must have had spikes about that big because he was able to stick his foot in the ground and go on that wet, uh, muddy field. But yeah, it's been hurting us all year long. I mean, we're we're two pl- uh, we're we're going both ways. They're two platooning and. Um, it just wears our kids down in the third and fourth quarters. But, I mean, I'm proud of our kids. They play hard. Um, but it's definitely uh, playing a toll on us this year, playing these schools that are so much bigger than us that uh, have uh, twice as many kids and more athletes than we do. Bulldog Stadium here, um, it got pretty ripped up Friday night. Of course, you've had that all year long, played in mud almost every week, it seems. Um, is there a possibility at some day having turf on this field? Everybody's asking that question. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if I'm the person to ask on that. Um, you know, I'm always been in favor of grass fields, but this year has just been so crazy. Um, we have not played on a dry field since the Reigns game. And, uh, you know, in the beginning of the year, if you would have asked me playing on a wet field, I would say that would play to our advantage. But I would definitely say the last three weeks that it has hurt us just as much as it's uh, hurt the other teams. And Coach Miller this week from Van Austin, when I talked to him, he said, Coach, watching the film on your team against Lone Oak and uh, Commerce, he said, if you guys play in the dry field, those games might turn out differently just because we're a running team and our running backs aren't able to stick their foot in the ground and make cuts. I mean, Caden Harmon last week probably could have broke open two or three runs, but he's slipping in the mud. And even defensively, we're putting uh, guys on the ball to make tackles, and they're slipping and sliding and everything else. So, you know, Hopefully, you know, I would love to see turf uh, just because it, it plays a huge advantage. It's not for football, it's for all sports, for baseball and softball because they, uh, on rainy rainy springs, they're able to still get out and do some practices and stuff like that. But, you know, that's just something that, you know, you, you always hope for and wish for, but, you know, you deal with what you got. And But I'm okay with grass just as long as we don't have another rainy year like we've had this year. Right. Well, Van Austin, they haven't played on anything but turf all season long. It plays in their advantage come Friday night. Uh, indoor practices, you, you uh, have done that, seems like, or I think you have every week uh, for about seven weeks, and injuries coupled upon that, uh, that's a bad recipe. Yeah, this has just been a crazy year uh, that I've ever had as a head coach. Uh, we have not had a full four days of practice outside since week three. Uh, we've been cut short every week uh, with rain and uh, circumstances and been indoors at least one or two days a week. And, you know, it's great to practice indoors, but you can't get the full fledge that you want in a practice as far as, especially when you're playing spread teams each week, it's hard to simulate the spread inside a gym. But I mean, we've just had to deal with it. It's been a crazy year. Um, injuries, losing kids for certain circumstances. Um, I think last, uh, like yesterday, I told our coaches, I said, we have not had our full starting team since week three. We've had people out each week. Um, and I counted it up yesterday. We've lost six starters since week three, either due to injuries or other things. And, you know, in a school like Howe, as small as we are, when you lose six, that's huge. Because um, it's not like you're losing just one position. Most of our kids go both ways, so you're losing two positions. So it's just been a crazy year. It's been uh, it's a first for me. I've never dealt with anything like this, where each week you're, you're p- uh, piecing a piece to the puzzle with somebody that hasn't played a position. Uh, all year long. Um, usually two days you get your start in 11 and you roll with them and you fine tune them each week but it seems like each week this year we had to just move pieces of the puzzle around and, and do the best we can. But I do tip my hat to our kids because they've overcome it, they've adjusted to it and their effort is there every Friday night. Let's take a quick time out and when we come back we'll talk about the 56th Silver Spike. 
The First Baptist Church here in Howe, Texas would like to invite you and your family to a celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each Sunday morning at 1030, we meet for worship at 100 East Davis Street in Howe. Prior to that, we have relevant Bible fellowships for all ages beginning at 915. Join us each week to declare the hope that is found only in Christ. Be ready to experience the life-changing power of the gospel. There is only one message for every generation, and that message is Jesus. Coach uh, Van Alstein, uh, 56 Silver Spike coming up, uh, uh, rivalry game, but let's talk a little bit about them. Their quarterback, Gallagher, seems to make them go on offense. Yeah, Van Alstein's a very good football team. I know they, they started the season with a couple losses, but they played some very good football teams at the beginning of the year, and I think they've won six in a row. Um, so they're, uh, they're a good football team. Their quarterback is, is outstanding. Uh, their running back is very good as well. Uh, they're just they're very athletic and very big up front. Um, they're two platooning. I mean, they got 11 offense, 11 defense. Uh, but you know, in a rivalry game, our kids are going to be fired up. So um, it's going to be a it's going to be a good game, I believe. Um, but I got to tip my hat to VA. They got they got some good athletes over there. Well, let's talk about the rivalry game. And you've had some success uh, in your career in rivalry games. Uh, talk about that and, and what's your uh, uh, I guess what's the secret. There, I guess there's really not a secret. Um, I mean, we treat it just like it's a regular game, uh, but we intensify practices a little bit just because it's a rivalry game. Uh, the kids are always more motivated for a rivalry game. Um, but I wouldn't say there's a, a recipe for it. I just think that the way we approach it as a coaching staff, um, we address it as a regular game, but we always add little wrinkles into practice just because uh, it's going to be a louder environment. It's going to be a more exciting environment. Um, so we do little things at practice to get our kids ready for that. But this being our, our seniors' last game, I think they, um, they're they going to be fired up for it. I mean, they have a little distaste for VA, so they're, they're always excited for that. <laughs> Do you treat this game somewhat like a playoff game? It is a playoff game for us, and that's what I told the kids uh, this week. I said, this is our last game of the season, and uh, it is a playoff game for us. Even though we might not go on and play a playoff game, we can be a spoiler this week. We can, If we go in there and we, we upset VA, it throws a huge wrinkle in, in how the district's going to play out. It throws a huge wrinkle to VA on who they're going to play in the first round of playoffs and everything else. So it is a playoff game for us. It's a way for us to finish the season with a W. Um, I always tell our coaching staff and our kids, the only time I ever want to finish the season with a loss is in the state championship game. Right. So the, you had your seniors had their final game here at Bulldog Stadium last Friday night, somewhat emotional for some kids. Uh, this is it. This is the final game for your seniors. What do you tell those kids? Well, I always address our seniors and I always just say, how do you want to leave your mark? This is your last game as a Howe Bulldog. How do you want to leave your mark? How do you want to be remembered? And sometimes it's not always what the scoreboard reads. It's how do you want to play that last game? And I always tell the seniors, you know, this is the last time you're going to play football. And for most of our kids, it's the last football game they'll ever play. Uh, so it's how do you want to leave your mark? How do you want to be remembered is what I tell our seniors. And it's, like I said, it's not always what a scoreboard reads. It's, it's the effort we're going to give on Friday night. Well, it's the 56th, the Battle of the Silver Spike. We hope everybody makes it over there. It needs to be loud. If you can't be there, you can always listen to it on HowEnterprise.com. For everyone who's been a part of this one, I'm Monty Walker. So long.